Hi everybody, it's Ben Songroth, Regional Education Technology Coordinator for the Learning Technology Center of Illinois. And today we are going to look at Adobe Spark Post and how you can use it with your students. So this will be a quick tutorial and an introduction into Adobe Spark Post. And if you're unfamiliar with Adobe Spark Post, it is an amazing uh, tool that you can use on a Chromebook, an iPad, an iPhone, or MacBook, or PC, completely universal. It's all web-based or if you're on a mobile device, app-based. And from the tool, you can create engaging graphics. So really awesome graphics that your kids can uh, use in a number of different ways. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into how to use this amazing tool. So first things first, we've got to get to Adobe Spark. So to do that, we're going to go to spark.adobe.com, and that's going to get you to the Adobe Spark webpage. When here, we simply go up first and we click Start Now if you've never logged in before, or Log In if you have. Then we get to our login page. And at this point, we're going to look to go ahead and just continue with Google. Uh, you see you have a number of other sign-in options here. And then if you do get your school to create school accounts for your teachers and students, um, you will go ahead and select uh, login with school account. But for our purposes today, we're going to go continue with Google. And this is just going to authenticate in through our Google account and bring us into our main Spark dashboard. So this video is all about Spark post and so what spark post is going to do is allow us to create awesome graphics that are super professional this video is going to be a quick tutorial on how to maximize those uh, that tool uh, we won't get into the real nuts and bolts of it but we're going to just kind of skim the surface to give you an idea of what's possible with it so to create a new graphic we're going to go up here to the plus sign and then we're going to go over to the right and see start from scratch now you might see graphics here and if you select that this is actually going to give us a number of different templates that we could use. There's also other templates that you can click on up here and see that there are many different other templates including uh, infographics and, and all sorts of other things. So you could always look for something that's pre-made but we're gonna go ahead and start from scratch. So we're gonna go up to start from scratch, click graphic, Spark's gonna load for a second, then we get to pick our size. So at this point we have to figure out what our audience is gonna be. This can be an awesome conversation to have with our students uh, on if they want to target an Instagram audience, a Facebook audience, or a, a Twitter audience, or a Pinterest audience, any of these, because each website has its own picture resolution size that would fit best for its platform. So you want to maybe talk to your students about who their audience is when they're making these. And if you're just more into print, you can also see that you have 8x11s, 11x17s, card stock, all that good stuff here. So we're going to go ahead and just go to the popular and we're going to pick square uh, just for our demonstration purposes. Going to go ahead and click next. Now we get to choose a photo. So one of the amazing things about Adobe Spark is it allows us to search an entire library of Creative Commons licensed photos. So these are all high quality images that we can use without having to worry about copyright because the authors have put a Creative Commons license on them. So this is really great because we have a lot of high quality images uh, from Unsplash, Pixabay, any of these websites that we can use in, uh, and, and annotate. Now, if you have your own, you can also click upload and you can bring in that picture from your, uh, your downloads folder or your drive if you have it on a Chromebook. We're gonna go ahead and just search for a free photo. Um, we're gonna go ahead and look for one of a lake. So now you can see we've got tons of these pictures uh, about of lakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one right here and now I have my picture. If you wanted to create a collage, you can actually select more than one and drop them in and it'll automatically create a collage for you, which is a really cool thing to do with your students. For our purposes, we're just gonna do one. Go ahead and click next, and it's going to create our photo for us and allow us to start customizing it. So now we're into the customization area of Adobe Spark. And what I really like about this area is that it really puts that Adobe creative touch to your images. So for example, I get a text box that automatically pops up. This text box will be different depending on what image you bring in. What it does is it actually takes the background colors and the contrast colors of the image and says, you know what, I think this color text box would look good with this image. So that's what it's done here, and you can see it's done a pretty good job. So in order to edit the text, before I want to do anything else, you can see I can just double click to edit the text. I get into this text box, I'm going to double click on it to click all of it, and then I'm going to delete that, and just type in something like Lake Life. Hit done. And now if I want to move that around or resize it, I just grab the corner boxes here, 
and kind of drag it. So there's no there's no setting to say I want it to be 18 point font or 72 point font. You just simply resize based on how you drag the box out. And then you click on it and move it. You also see you have your rotation box here that I could rotate it uh, along as well. So that's kind of how I can add text. Now if I wanted to add more text to it, I'm gonna go up to the top right hand corner of the screen where it says add. Select that, you can see I can add text. I could add another image if I wanted to, an icon, or if you have the business account or a professional account, you can add a logo, which is pretty cool too. If I wanted to add more, uh, change my text, I could have my text highlighted, and then I can see it's on type of text. I could change the color of it, so it gives me some suggested colors here that might match my color schemes. I can change the shape of the text to different shapes. So you see as I click this, the box will change based on which one I'm selecting. I can also give it different padding, so like you can see it gives it that extra kind of bump out on the sides of my text box. Uh, and then down here I can change the text effects to drop in shadows, callouts, you know, anything like that if I wanted to kind of make it spice it up a little bit. But the thing that I really like is the style. So if you click on style, it gives you this style wheel. And I've kind of picked my style here, but I want to see what Adobe suggests. So if I just grab the green circle here, click and hold on it. Now I could spin it. You can see it's going to give me, as I spin the wheel, it's going to give me all sorts of different options that it thinks might look good for my particular image. And when I find one that I like, like that one, I just stop on it. And I can always make it a little bit bigger if I want. So I think that's really cool that it kind of takes that creative graphic design and does it for you. So now that I've got my image finished. You know, there are so many other things I could do, but I, I think I'm pretty good with this. Um, I want to now see how I can send it back to my uh, teacher if I'm the student. So to do that, I have a couple of different ways that I can make that happen. One, I can go up to the top right hand corner here where it says download, and I could select that. And that's actually going to allow me to download it as a PNG, a JPEG, or a PDF. Or I can click share. So one of the things I like about Adobe Spark and all the different tools is that you can publish everything you make in Adobe Spark via link. So I'm going to go ahead and click publish. And when I do that, I get the option to now share it to social media. I can share it via link. I can email it or I can send it directly to Google Classroom. All of these options are really great. So if especially great if you use Google Classroom. Because if I'm a student and I use Google Classroom, I can click on Classroom, and then a window will pop up. And from this window, it's going to ask me to choose my classes, and then select the one that I currently have uh, am trying to submit this to. And then as a teacher, if I set up an assignment with a due date on it, that's the key. You have to have a due date on the assignment. It will show up for my student to find and then submit the image to without having to download it, without having to copy and paste a link. They can just simply click on the classroom icon, find your class, select the assignment that they need to turn this into, and hit done, and hit submit, and then their assignment will populate in Google Classroom. I think it is really great. The other option is link. So if I take the link option here, I can take this link and send it off any way I want, but I can simply see here, if I click copy on that, go to a new window, and then paste it in, that's my image. So I don't have to collect 30 different images if I have a class of 30. I can collect 30 links instead. So you're not taking up any extra space on your computer by downloading them or you know, worrying about sharing permissions in Google Drive, anything like that. You just simply take the link, copy it, paste it, submit it. This also gives you the ability to share it home with mom and dad. So if your students make a really cool post and they want to send it home to mom and dad, they can go up and they can just grab that link and they can send it home to mom and dad, which is pretty cool. And if the mom and dad want to share it out, they can even go in here up to share after that email it, copy the link, all that good stuff. So that's Adobe Spark Post. I think it is an amazing creative tool and an unbelievable way to create graphics that pop and professional looking graphics on a Chromebook or an iPad, an iPhone, a PC or a Mac. That's one of the beautiful things about it is it's universal across devices. So whether you're making memes in class or having your students in a business class, create flyers for their business or social media posts for their business, or having kids make posters on content that you're studying in any class. I think Adobe Spark Post is a great tool to do that and more. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and stay tuned for more in our creative video series. Thanks for watching.